It is time now for selling it, where entrepreneurs get advice on how to grow their products or their businesses. This week, Jill Donenfeld is the founder of Dishes Dish, which offers a unique service for the busy family, and she's looking at ways to get noticed. And Erin graciously is going to initially field your questions, but everybody's going to be able to jump in, including Dan Cathy. He's a marketing master extraordinaire. But it's great of you to be here, Jill. First, just tell Aaron about your business. It's really interesting. Thank I you see so franchise possibilities, mm -hmm. but I digress. I agree. Well, I have a weekly home chef service, and once a week, a colonista, which is my trademarked word um, for personal chef. Which is brilliant, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Say it again, Jill, so everybody hears it. Colonista. Colonista. Registered right. trademark. Right. It's the person that goes <laughs> to your home, right, and cooks for you. Exactly. So right. once a week, she plans a menu completely customized to you and your family of six to eight dishes that can be kind of mixed and matched throughout the week. Right. And then she grocery shops for all the ingredients, comes to your house, cooks everything, cleans up the kitchen, and right. tiptoes out, leaving you with fresh, delicious meals that will last throughout the week. Right, right. And I would just say, too, just, just to set the record straight, you started this at 22. Yes. You're, you're all of 25 now. Yes. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't tie my shoes at 22, okay? So congratulations. I mean, you've done a phenomenal job. Um, Jill has secured a tremendous amount of media coverage as well, major media outlets. You've just expanded to L.A. Yes. Right? You've got about 30 clients a week, and you're at this point now where you're an inflection point. You want to know how can you grow your business, take it to the next level, as they say. Right? Exactly. You want to scale it. Yeah. Like, so five years, I'll be like Chick-fil-A status? Uh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, it only, Dan, it only took Chick-fil-A, I think. You know, we overstated 42 years from the first Chick-fil-A <laughs> restaurant. Right. So. right. Okay, so I've got a little time. Right. And Jill has a lot of questions. Jill's on Facebook. She's on Twitter. You've got 184, 185 fans because I just signed up as a fan on, on Facebook yesterday. We like him. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to say, I was so excited. I stayed up till midnight last night, even a little bit later, just putting notes together. I have two pages of notes because I was so excited for your business. And awesome. I think you're at the stage right now where most entrepreneurs hit this wall where it's, okay, here's, here's the, here are the crossroads. How do I move this from a cause to a company? You have a great story. I love your story, okay. but what do you do to make it even bigger, better, and scale your business? And I think one of the things is this migratory path of, from me to we, right? So a lot of your story in PR is about Jill. And it's not bad, I know it's not about you, mm -hmm. but you have these colonistas who really are your marketing militia that I think you need to tap. And you go on your website, they are subjugated, they're way down, they've got biographies, but they don't have pictures. And they need to be deputized to market for you. They should be tweeting. They should be mm -hmm. encouraging your clients to tweet at the table, mm -hmm. right? Tweeting at the table. They should basically, because you say most of your business comes from referrals, word of mouth, referrals, yeah. right? So these colonistas, they all, they, if I, if you correct me if I'm wrong, they come from culinary institutes, great brand name restaurants. Absolutely. Brilliant wow. move. You've got great Get that out there, right? Yeah, yeah, get it out there, right. Get them out there. What else? Give her guidance, because you said right. that it, all the marketing is word of mouth. And right. so where, do you, where does she take growing the business online, right. locally, right. brick and mortar? Well, a couple of basic things, right? Like, again, you've got video, you've got blog, you, you've basically dipped your toe in the water, right? But search engine optimization and search engine marketing are very important. Mm -hmm. And you're focusing on your methodology a little bit too much in your website. And I'd also lose the cutesy website. I, I, I love the cartoons. It's nice for your first stage of business. But now that as you're going to mature, I think you need to go from cute to classy. And we talked about this a little bit backstage, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And, and I, I think that's going to help you. I just redone our website. I know. It's always <laughs> like that. So you need to optimize words like personal chef, um, at-home cooking, things like that, where people yeah. are looking for this service, it's going to come up in search engine results, right? So that's right. search engine optimization, totally free. Which we have, you know, we do we do some some SEO. Right. And, um, you know, we have, like, Google AdWords and that right. kind of thing. We have all that activated. And then you should also think about SEM, which is the marketing portion. So sign up with someone like City Search, where they mm -hmm. threw, like, it's like a thousand bucks a month, right? It's not, it's not a huge investment. Right. It's three clients, three clients and three and a quarter clients, whatever it is. Right. And they will help you optimize that. So when I type it in, you're going to come up. Because when I type in, you know, anything related to this potential service, you don't come up right now. And okay. I want to see you come up. It's very important. Um, you also need to corporatize your profile online. So I want to see on LinkedIn. I want to see uh, Colonista on Wikipedia. I want to see Dishes oh, Dish, right on. you know, on, right. on, on, on Wikipedia. Um, you know, you should go after that corporate audience, like you said, the financial, the Wall Street guys. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can go on and on. You want me to keep going? <laughs> no, yeah. I want to know, because uh, yeah. everybody's hankering to jump in here. Right. But I see if you really want to grow this, and I briefly mentioned this, 
She could franchise this. Sure. Could she not? I, I think she could franchise it. I think this is all about a couple things. First of all, you really need to empower the colonistas. I love that idea. And by the way, always put an R in the circle because it is registered as a trademark after the word colonista. That's your brand to have forever protected. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like the idea of empowering the colonistas. That's where the rubber meets the road. I mean, okay. really, your business is in the hands of those colonistas, both from the standpoint of delivering on your promise of value and quality, as well as doing the marketing for you. Mm -hmm. Make them stars. Love that idea, Aaron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's also less work for me. So yeah. <laughs> I like that. I, I know. Exactly. <laughs> Well, Scott? Well, I, I think that you're at a, a pivotal point in your growth, and I think there's several things you can do to kind of skyrocket to the next level. You obviously have achieved some level of scale, and now it's about taking all of these different things that you've done and getting it out in the world in a bigger way. So whether you decide to go licensing, franchising, people know about you, they want to be part of your brand, and they want you to be the, like Jeff said, empowerment you know, that allows mm -hmm. them to go to the next level. Right. So a few things I would suggest. One, since word of mouth is your biggest uh, kind of you know, client referrals are your biggest kind of money maker. I would suggest trying to find ways to empower people who are referring your business. The first thing that we spoke about earlier was videos. Uh, you know, obviously you've started to do, you know, various different videos and such, but I think that you have to establish yourself as the niche expert. Mm -hmm. You are the colonista. You are the person who is going to sell through, you know, to your the, the audience. Queen right. The queen of colonistas. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. We, <laughs> have, we happen to have a guest on who's in the food business one of the biggest actually for privately owned family businesses Dan do you have any words of wisdom for Jill words of guidance for her for yes her? the first thing is come to Atlanta yeah. uh, number two add Chick-fil-A to those home-cooked meals because we can uh, <laughs> fix it with party trays <laughs> but uh, you know one of the things that and back in our history Jill way back is that dad had the wisdom to know what he could do and what he could not do he knew where he was gifted and it may be that you're at the point where you need to bring on somebody that would be a, an incredibly strong number two person to you. I don't know anything about your organizational structure at this point, but I thank God for a, gem, guy, a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Collins who came on board, who was dad's right-hand man, who had it not been for Jimmy Collins, this real strong business professional uh, that came on board that began to build the infrastructure that it took to be able to have a, a national presence. Uh, we would not be where we are today, and th that's a big decision point. Uh, the other point, these colonistas that you're referring to who are your representatives, if we can make sure that the business model, that they are able to be very profitable and they can have a great income, then you'll yeah. find that that retains these incredibly valuable people for you and also creates what we like to call, refer to as raving fans. And your strongest advocate for growing your business beyond social media or billboards or anything else uh, is going to be sa happy, satisfied, raving customers who are so fascinated by what you're doing. They buzz everywhere. It's remarkable what an incredible network customers have today. I mean, they've got uh, all kind of access to tools to talk and noise about your brand for you. And if you can create a, just a fever hot uh, exciting experience at the customer level and where these representatives for you can make money, then you're going to find that it's going to begin to start that cycle, positive cycle. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited about your business. Thank we you all much. are, Jill. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. It's really Jill excited. excited. Yeah. Jill Donenfeld, The Dishes Dish. It's thedishesdish.com. Hopefully we have it up there. I'll tweet about it so everybody can go and visit it. All right. It. Thank you. Jill, man. will you please stay in touch with us and let Absolutely. us know? And I have a book for you actually here that Brian Solis wrote about public relations. And so I'll give you a copy of that as well. He's been on the show before. Fantastic. And Thank Degan, you very much. Yes, sir. Check with us at Chick-fil-A. Call me. Uh, personally, or uh, they can get, give you my uh, contact information. DanTKathy.com is a blog site, and uh, we can kind of connect up. And, and again, we'd love to have you visit with us in Atlanta at our corporate headquarters near the Atlanta airport. There you go, Joe. That is great. Go. That is really cool. Is really I cool. want an invite too. <laughs> <laughs>